So there was I in the script. Okay, so we're exploding. Now, while we're exploding, I want to do some calculations and store some references. To all the spaces that it's going to be exploding in. I suppose I should use a picture to illustrate what's going on here. Here we go, this is basically what I'm trying to set up. So, from the 2D array, it's going to read the bomb's position, and then it's going to check in each direction from the bomb position. It's going to check if there's anything in the way, or if there's anything that's not in the way. If there's anything in the way, it's going to stop the explosion from continuing, and if not, the explosion is going to go for the full length of the blast size. So before we explode, we've got to. I need to create a list, don't we? Okay, uh, check the surrounding area. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, like I said, we do need to create a list. So, to create a list, it's import system collections dot generic. Now, let me just save that out. I'm pretty sure there's no comma or some yep, semicolon. Okay. System collections generic semicolon. I normally copy from my list notes, but that's no achievement for me. <laughs> okay, so we've got. Right position, it's going to be blast. And this is all the time. Okay, so for the blast, I need to create a list uh, a list of all the blast positions. So, blast, pause, list. Type list, and this is going to be a list of. Well, we're using vector two positions everywhere, aren't we? All right, I can reconstruct it into 3D when we instantiate the explosion there. Um, so vector two, a list of vector twos. So when we're checking the surrounding area, I'm checking. Yeah, let's create a function. Check blast zone. Got to create a function for that. Gonna check the blast zone. Um, I'm gonna be doing a few loops, and I don't want to be keep declaring a ver a loop variable for the index. So let's just go variable i int equals zero. So I can just go for i equals. That's already set up. Now we're gonna be checking positions, so we better construct a vector two that we can compare against. Um, to use as a reference for checking the position in a 2D array. So, check position type vector 2. And let's initialize it. Uh, assign it a value of 0 to start with. Okay, so I suppose let's go we'll check each direction separately and individually. So, let's go. Check left first, that'll probably be the easiest. Now that's why I created the i variable, so when I create my for loop, I don't have to do all that typing in there, I can just go for i equals. Now, um, if I start it at zero, it's going to be checking right on top of the bomb. We don't want to do that, so for var i equals one, we want to start checking the first position next to it. While i is Less than, and this is why I set up. Yep, blast size. Okay, it says zero here, but feeding from the player, I'll set it to three. Now, blast size, it will start at one, but as you pick up power ups, you'll increase the size. Okay, so as we pick up a power up, it will bring us from one to two to two to three, and if there's a super one, we'll just make it uh, ten or twenty or something like that, so it takes out the whole line. So that number will increase by power ups. So we've got a bomb blast size gets fed into the blast size. So that's what we're checking. So while i is less than 
last size. Um, we're starting at one, so plus one. Yep, because we're counting. Or I could say if while well, i is less than or equal to last size, but yeah, all right, let's just keep it. That's there. That's what. I plus plus. So we're going to create a loop. So what are we going to do in the loop? First, we need to um, construct this check position so we can compare it against the array. So what's that going to equal? Okay, it's going to equal a vector two, which comes from where we are. Now we have our bomb array position, so we're checking everything from where we are. Now I'm checking in the x, and I'm checking to the left, so that's minus i. So one plus from ah uh, sorry, as bomb array position dot x minus i, and then the array pos dot y. So there's our position that we want to check in the array. So uh, and also we don't want to be going outside of the array limits, otherwise you get an array out of range error. So we need to put a check in for that. Okay, check for array out of range. So if what are we doing? We're doing the X. If check position dot x is greater than or equal to zero. So this is what I'm doing here. If this i and minusing that from the bomb array position x became minus one minus two, there isn't a two dimensional array position minus one minus two. It starts at zero. So we want to make sure that we're not falling below zero or else we will get an array out of range error. So we've definitely made sure. Now we can start checking. Yep, yeah, let's check if the block is empty. Because if it's empty, we can blast there. So if this is going to end up with a lot of this, but this uh, the bomb's doing a lot of mental calculations. It's got to do a lot of work, so we're going to have a few. It's going to turn into quite a big function here. So if the well, we're checking the level array, and we have a reference to the level manager level array. So if the level manager level array at what position? At the check pos at the check box and the check positions. That's what we're checking. X Y. So if the level manager the level array at this position that we're checking is equal to zero, that's going back to those numbers I was using. Yeah, so empty space is zero. So if the position is zero, it could be safe to say that we could add a blast there. So can I create yep, blast position list? We're gonna add this vector to blast list. So when we finish doing all our calculations and checks, we can instantiate explosion at every single position in our blast position list. And check because it's a vector two already. So I'm just going to add that position after we check it. Okay, so that's for an empty space. Now, there are going to be rocks in the way, but they're destructible. That's the point of the bombs, it is a rock. If so, yeah, last. Okay, so I put that note in because we, if we hit a block, the explosion is going to stop there. We don't want to start exploding all the blocks in a row. Okay, so how are we going to do that? It's the same thing. We're checking the same position, but the rock block giving it a value of one in our 2D array. Okay, so like I said, most importantly, if so, we want to stop the blasts. Now, this is all happening in the middle of a loop. Now, I think there's a correct way of breaking out of a loop. Uh, similar to a switch case uh, break, but I've got so many if clusters here in a for loop. I don't know if that's going to work. I don't want to test it in real time here, so let's just do something that I know will work. 
Okay, so I want to break out of the loop. The loop is counting blast size. So we can just take that. So we're going to say i equals blast size plus one. So we're making i greater than the loop variable that we're checking against. So it should, okay, as we come through here, we're going to make i the maximum value. So it should fall right out of this for loop. And that should be the end of things. Now let's create an explosion prefab so we can replace that. I'm not up to that yet, am I? I'm still creating the blast position list. Oh well, let's do it. Type transform. Okay, so that's my monkey. Yay! Yeah, now I need to. Alright, let's just do the left way for testing. Uh, and we've already got the loop barrel. I is not. I is less than last position list count. Last last list dot count. Last less than yet I plus plus. Okay, so so this is just for testing. Let's just go instantiate explosion, explosion prefab at what position? That's a vector two. And we're iterating through all the positions which stored in the blast position list. So blast position. Last position list at what index at i uh, dot x same for y and everything's happening on the zero. Okay, so for every item in the blast position list, we're going to instantiate a prefab explosion. That position. All right, let's see if I've done anything crazy. Looks like I have. Probably missed a bracket somewhere. Open, close vector. Uh, ah, yeah, of course. Look, we only got halfway there. And the rotation. Quaternion. And I bet it was a lowercase i. Yes. Let's not have a uh, float, float int. What did I do there? Ah, oh, vector, vector two, vector three, because we're creating a position. All right, I really mucked up on that instance here because I was, yeah, I was ready for that. Okay, so we've got a vector three. Uh, I haven't put the prefab in. No, that goes on the bomb. So the bomb now has the explosion prefab. Explosion. So, let's put a bomb down, and then when it runs out of the three seconds, it should instantiate a blast to the left. Yeah, let's put it over here just to start with. Three, go. And there we have it. So it doesn't destroy itself. And I thought they were triggers, but he can't walk through that either. What have I done here? Box collider is trigger. Blast crap. Ah, let's we'll see. Blast graphic, I've left the box collider on. I don't want that. As you can see, I can't walk into the blast. That's a good idea. Changing a prefab, it's not like changing something in the scene. Let's try that again. Drop a bomb. Two, three. And as you can see, it, it's stopping. Okay, so finally that 2D array is actually doing its job. We're reading it and we're finding out what's at that position in the 2D array. Let's check it, everything's working now. Yeah, he does go into the blast. I suppose we should create a destroy script for that explosion. I wasn't going to get to that to the trigger part, but let's just make it destroy and then we'll add the trigger for the player walking into it later. Okay, 
So what did I say? It was about 0.5 seconds I was giving it. Loading duration. Loading is 0.5. Now we can call destroy with a delay. So if we say game object and we don't want it to explode until that amount of time. Okay, so that should be all set up. Let's make sure I don't forget to put that on the game object. Okay, let's just run one more test and then we'll continue in all the other directions. Wow, okay, so this is cool. We get to check the three out now. So the player should only have a blast size of three, so we're going to get one, two, three. It should stop there. So, uh, whoop, mouse button is also fine. There we go, one, two, three, and they've destroyed after three seconds. Another bomb. One, two, three. Let's drop one here. Now it's three wide, but it hits the wall, so it's only two. It's a bit quick. Let's make that 0.7. So yeah, even if I change it in this script, I will have to update the prefab. Explosion, reset, 0.7. Okay, well we've got one direction, we're proving that it's kind of working, so let's get this thing working the next direction, because that was easy. <laughs> so we've checked left, now we have to check Right, now I just copied that whole block because so we're pretty much going to be doing the same thing. But it's just where the different, we're checking right here. So on the array position X, instead of going minus, we want to go plus. So that our new check position is going to the right. Now, we want to check that we don't go too far right. So this conditional check for the out of array, out of array range exception doesn't break it. So now we need to reference the level manager again. And we can ask it for what it's, um, what I call it, level size. Yep, level size X. Okay, so level manager level size dot X. What have I done here? If checks plus X is less than level manager at level size x then do everything as we were doing before so this stops the array out of range error then we check if it's an empty space or we check if it's a rock and the same thing we break out of the loop ok so we should have two way explosions now so if I just hit space here hmm, ok great so we've got explosions to the right let's set one up in the middle Okay, now did that go up to the rock? Let's have a look. We got one. Okay, yeah, we have. There is an explosion inside that rock. So that's what I was saying. I was still got to set up the explosion with a trigger to destroy. There it is. There, see? It totally exists. So we've got to destroy that rock and have the explosion there. Alright, since I've started on that explosion script already, let's set it up. Now it's a trigger. So let's just go on, trigger, enter. Other type, which I always forget if it's collision or collider. I think it's collider. But I always save it and ask you.